webinar series. Today's session is BMC Helix ITSM, on-premise deployment and migration end-to-end -end process. This is a very packed agenda today on this session, so we won't be unmuting anyone until the end, where we'll have around 15 minutes or so for live Q&A. So I just want to introduce our presenters. So we have uh, Morali V, and we also have Demetrio today. They will do their formal introduction shortly. Um, if we can just go through the legal notice. Um, as a reminder, this will be recorded. So if there is anyone on here with a name that you want to make anonymous, please go ahead and do so. This will be shared on YouTube, our social platforms, and potentially our BMC community and LinkedIn. So if there is any concerns, then feel free to uh, change your profile. The other reminder is for those that haven't used uh, Zoom before, we do have a Q&A section. So whilst we're going through this webinar, there are a lot of panelists on here today that are supporting our two presenters. So please use the Q&A section of Zoom, which you'll find at the bottom. And any questions that don't get answered, we will take them to the live Q&A at the end. And also any that don't get answered today, we will cover those and put them into a blog post post event. So without further ado, I would like to hand over for us to get started with Morali. Over to you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. My name is Morali Vishwanathan. I'm a, I'm a solution architect uh, from the BMC Engineering. So let's get started. Um, so today, uh, let's go, to, go through the agenda. So we will cover the details you need for preparing your deployment, implementation, and your project plans. There'll be a lot of details shared today, which will, which will assist you to prepare these plans for you. Um, then we'll cover uh, the install and deployment uh, best practices and the details. We cover, we'll cover customization, migration, integration, best practices, and what uh, development activities you can perform during the migration project. We'll cover data migration. There are two utilities uh, which will be um, primarily involved here. Uh, one is called the Helix Data Manager or HTM, and the other one is the DWP Export Import Utility. We'll cover unit testing cycles and fixes. We'll cover, cover emitted cutovers. We'll have two emitted cutovers, to be honest, like emitted cutover one, and then we do your, uh, we cover the UAD cycles, use, use like some test, test cases and functional, functional test cases and all the good stuff. And then we, we do, we'll also cover is uh, pre-final data migration validation, which is stage eight, and one more EC2 before the go live, and finally the go live. So this is the end-to-end -end process diagram uh, for the entire stage, and and we are we are we just released and and published our end-to-end -end one page process documentation. The link is there in the, in the screen, and will also be made available to you. Um, so basically, this is the this is the diagram which shows you the stages and the main activities which happens during all those stages. This uh, table will, will help you to uh, understand uh, what stages happen in what environments, right? So, for example, in the development environment, you will be performing the the stage one and stage two, which is which is primarily your preparing and planning and installation and deploying. Uh, uh, activities which will definitely be performing in all the environments and then stage three is all about your uh, customization integration development work and all that good stuff uh, that will be performing only on the development uh, environment and you can you can leverage our deployment console to to export and create deployment packages so that you can deploy them in the other environments like non-prod non-prod here uh, is basically equals to your qa sit pre-prod environments right and then same thing, you will basically use the similar packages to deploy those in your production environment as well. So stage four is data migration. So which you'll be practicing one time in dev, and then you'll be again uh, um, um, migrating data in your, in your non-prods and your production environments. The advantage there is uh, when you're doing your uh, full my data migration in your, in your, in your non-production environment, you'll be bringing newer data, right? Same thing with the production. Uh, stage five is unit testing. Stage six is delta migration, which you again practice in the development environment. Uh, stage seven is UAT, which you'll basically perform in your non-production environments like QA and SIT, pre-prod environments, and also in production. So from stage, uh, so at stage seven, we want you to focus only on production to continue your, your UAT cycle, sign off your um, refund delta migrations, immediate cutover, and go live, right? So support and migration paths. So this the source version support is what is in the in the, in the right hand side. So all these products are supported for migrations, and these are the source versions. Uh, one advantage for 
for, for customers who have source version of 2002. So we have a new utility which we just released. Uh, it is called Workflow Migration Utility or Customization Migration Utility. So for customers who have the 2002 source version can leverage that utility. Um, and that will and that'll also uh, have a special migration pack on the HTM, uh, which will allow them to use that and, and then, and then uh, use those two utilities, right? Uh, for the other customers like who are not in 2002, <clears throat> you still have uh, a developer studio and deployment console and a combination of those, which you can leverage for migrating your customization, which we'll also cover in, in, a, in a bit. So let's look at the stage one planning. So the number one thing which we want you to um, uh, think about is your um, license compliance. So end of the day, you have classic licenses in your current production systems. And uh, right now with, with the cloud, it, it, BMC is all about bundled licenses, right? So this utility helps you to run in, run the uh, run the utility in assessment mode uh, before you start your migration project. So it basically assesses your classic licenses and that's a compliance report. So that's an Excel report generated, which you can use use to evaluate your licenses on classic and, and plan for what how much bundle license you want to buy for a fixed set, floating and, and like, like a suite license is equal to your bundle licenses by the way. And the same utility, the license conversion utility, is also run during the migration pro uh, process after you migrate the data and it converts your, when you run it in conversion mode, it converts your classic licenses to bundle licenses for your people profile data. So other uh, planning uh, um, sections of the documentation which will, which will help you to build your uh, de <clears throat> deployment plan, implementation plan, data migration plan, and project plan. So you have a lot of, a lot of good information and documentation and checklists, which will allow you to uh, review them and, and and come up with your with your deployment plan uh, before you deploy. Come up with your implementation plan and data migration plan before you go and implement your customizations, integrations, and you need new new development like like dashboards or catalogs, any anything like that. So you can we have a lot of good information where which will help you to plan it, and of course your data migration plan as well. And we also strongly encourage you to create a project plan, uh, at least a draft with the with, uh, with key milestones before you start the project. And one more thing I wanted to let you know that while, while you're working on these plans, and let's say you have a proposed architecture, proposed deployment, you have some integrations which you feel that, hey, I need some help. I do not know if these are supported or not, or not. You can definitely check with our support and documentation. If not, you can always reach out to BMC and, and we can have sessions to help you add that together. Again, just uh, uh, reiterating that. So we want you to create, to go through the planning and preparation and environment sections, and it will definitely help you to create your deployment plan and what we expect you to have in your deployment plan with the information you have also already gathered from the BMC documentation and, and working with the BMC teams, ensure that you, you come up with your proposed deployment architecture, uh, come up with your uh, uh, work, master node worker nodes and your Kubernetes cluster sizing and setup. Um, Make sure you make sure you have planned for your load balancer, ingress setup, and your persistent volume, and and your uh, uh, single sign-on uh, uh, realm entries and whatnot, configurations and whatnot, and of course your plan for your deployment of your uh, platform and application. And yeah, please don't please don't forget to add these details to your project plan so you can capture all the low-level details. Same thing, we have a section for preparing for migration. In this section, we have a lot of details for you, including some scripts which you can. Uh, a leverage and use it to capture your scope of your work for your customizations, integrations, configurations, and any additional development work. Uh, same thing for the data migration planning. Um, you can look into your current data volume, your sizes, and look in mo main, most importantly, look into your custom forms and fields so that those are the things you'll need to uh, update the migration packs while when you perform your data migration with HTM. Same thing, yeah, we're just retrading that. Make sure you put these in the project plan so that you don't miss them and ensure you, your tasks are covered. Uh, so so we are talking, we talked about a project plan template we want you to have, right? Project plan to start with and with all the drafts. So this uh, slide gives you a high level that, hey, these are the key milestones you can focus on to put into your project plan, which is really helpful for your, uh, for your migration project. So make sure you have something on your planning, your deployment sections, your low-level de development tasks, your data migration tasks, of course, your, all your testing cycles, pre-final data migration, embedded cutovers. Embedded cutovers are very, very useful because you can you can basically dress rehearse your cutover activities, time it, and so you can be planned, you can be ready for your rollout. So 
So on, on this uh, migration projects, of course, right? So you, you need tools, right? So we, we want you to have dedicated machines for these tools because the way the uh, HTM uh, utility and the EWP, they are like CPU uh, and, and, and uh, uh, basically they need their, they, they need their more own CPU memory to use and it, they, they basically depend on them, right? So it needs it needs good resources to run, right? So we, we definitely wanted to have dedicated machines for those. Same thing with your development tools. We want you to have a dedicated tool servers where you can install all these tools. So the two, two new tools which, which we just released are the uh, customization migration, the workflow migration utilities and your license conversion utilities. And of course, you ensure you download the latest versions of those tools. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to, hand it over to Dimitra to, to take you on for the uh, installation experience. Over to you, Dimitra. Hello, thank you, Samantha Morale, for setting this up. Uh, thank, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. So my name is uh, Dmitry Kornichuk. I'm a BMC Solution Architect. And uh, today in this session, we will provide a quick overview on how to plan, uh, prepare for the successful deployment of uh, BMC Helix uh, service management on-prem, as well as the installation steps for the containers running on the Kubernetes platform. Um, we will be covering, as Morali has mentioned previously, um, uh, for the stage one, planning and preparing for the environment, um, as well as stage two, installation process overview. Um, yeah, if you can click next, Morali. Thank you. Um, so for the stage one, um, for uh, deployment flow, we suggest to refer to the uh, following sequence. So you have, you can see the uh, plan the installation, prepare for the installation, uh, perform the uh, Helix service management uh, platform installation and the ITSM suite. Um, next, please. So let us review the uh, deployment architecture first. Um, so uh, BMC Helix um, ITSM container includes the essential components, such as you can see on the left, uh, BMC Docker trusted uh, registry uh, DTR that stores the container images. Um, repo or repository, we recommend that you set up a local repository such as Harbor. Um, it will synchronize the local Harbor um, uh, repository registry with uh, BMC DTR, and uh, then you should be able to access the uh, container images uh, from the, this repo. Um, as for uh, BMC Deployment Manager, um, we uh, use uh, the uh, common services such as Nginx, um, Ingress Controller Component, uh, which is the uh, specialized, load, uh, specialized load balancer for the uh, Kubernetes environment. Uh, which distributes the uh, network uh, traffic and uh, scales the workload. For uh, BMC Helix Innovation Suite, uh, we support the block storage. Um, you can see uh, for Helix platform, these uh, uh, components such as uh, uh, common services and uh, common data tier. For common services components, we uh, have the uh, Helix portal, dashboard, um, Helix SSO, for the uh, data tier, we have uh, components such as Victoria Metrics, Kafka, Zookeeper, Postgre, uh, Minio, Redis, and Elasticsearch. For the uh, service management application tier, um, you can see above, it uh, has the Helix ITSM, CMDB Smart IT, um, ITSM Insights, uh, Meteor, uh, DWP, and multi-cloud broker, and business workflows. Uh, next, please. Yeah, as for the container environment sizing planning and considerations, next please. Um, yeah, as you know, we are constantly improving the sizing requirements. So before you deploy the product, make sure that you have environment uh, uh, meets with the hardware and software. So for uh, Kubernetes uh, sizing requirements, we have uh, this uh, segregation uh, per worker node. The uh, specification of the sizing you can see, uh, so these baselines, uh, again, are the results of the performance uh, on the lab benchmarks. Um, and um, it has the following categories, such as the compact, uh, small, medium, and large. Um, so for the compact, um, it is the special category, uh, basically intended for the non-production uh, environments. So basically just for the uh, proof of concept or tests. Uh, if you have high number of in in that uh, create high number of system transactions, uh, you normally have to increase 
and accommodate the load, um, then we suggest uh, you use the um, uh, the small, medium, and large. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have this uh, um, sizing criteria based on the concurrent users and the uh, CPU and RAM. Um, so yeah, please ensure that you are meeting these criteria. And as well, bear in mind that for um, every node, um, it requires 150 gig of RAM. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, on the Kubernetes cluster planning, uh, you can observe that um, here we have the following Kubernetes and OpenShift-based platform that are supported with the um, underlying um, uh, orchestration, such as the Rancher, Tanzu, uh, and Nutanix. Um, as for the package manager, uh, we use Helm. As for the ingress, we suggest Nginx uh, ingress controller. And also, we support um, major hyperscalers as the OCI, uh, EKS, uh, GCI, and AKS. So um, yeah, we are pretty flexible with a um, variety of options um, you, you prefer. Next slide, please. Um, yeah. Um, we have assembled the assessment questionnaire that's uh, um, expected to help you with understanding the uh, container environment and capabilities, uh, determine the service management product that you want to install, uh, review the um, existing environment details uh, if you are using non-container BMC Helix IT service management VM-based solutions. So we have the list of uh, queries like uh, questions that normally should help you to address uh, the um, optimal uh, setup. Um, and uh, um, also we have uh, the uh, dedicated space uh, uh, with various options and the um, um, best practice documentation. Next slide, please. So um, yeah, um, also we have the uh, checklist uh, document, which uh, um, yeah helps you to um, understand the system requirements uh, uh, some hardware, software, and network dependencies. So this is uh, in, this incorporates some um, uh, real life like use cases uh, with the sizing and uh, some major um, options. So basically, you can just uh, uh, check through and ensure that uh, it aligns with uh, your setup. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah. Um, as for the planning, yeah, as setup. Um, so um, uh, for the Helix uh, platform common services installation, um, we uh, require the SMTP server um, to run the deployment manager script. And uh, basically, you can use uh, um, any SMTP server to activate the tenant through the email. However, uh, this is for the Kubernetes cluster. As for the Helix ITSM, we still support the uh, Exchange server. Um, 2016 and the Office 365. Um, yeah, thanks. The next slide, please. Um, yeah, as for the Jenkins for integration and deployments, um, uh, bear in mind that you need to provision a dedicated VM uh, with the uh, following uh, sizing requirements, like uh, it should be at least one node, um, like two CPUs, and uh, could be deployed on um, uh, CentOS, Red Hat, or uh, like other Fedora distribution. And uh, yeah, uh, at least uh, eight gig RAM is required. Um, yeah, next slide. Um, as for the database uh, planning, so um, as you know, we support um, Oracle, SQL, and Postgres. So uh, in terms of the version for 22.106 uh, latest deployment, we support 19.16 uh, uh, and uh, um, sequentially the uh, Microsoft uh, Server uh, 2018 and Postgres uh, 13 version. However, we are constantly improving the version. So please uh, follow the uh, latest uh, announcements uh, as for which components we are supporting. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so as you know, for the Kubernetes components, we have high performance um, uh, persistent volume. Uh, which is essential for the overall system performance, right? Um, and the persistent volume disk requires the block storage. Uh, 
which has been described in the architecture diagram previously. So um, for BMC, uh, um, uh, we as BMC support uh, like bring your own storage uh, for the persistent volumes, but uh, normally we suggest that uh, you uh, have the uh, PV, uh, so-called persistent volume or PVC as um, the uh, high, highly performance uh, um, DB storage. So here you can see uh, that we have specific requirements uh, for uh, those components, uh, like the, um, uh, yeah, for the read-write types and the block storage. Um, other than that, uh, we have the uh, read-write, uh, we do not support the uh, read-only uh, many and uh, write uh, one spot. So um, yeah, bear in mind that this is uh, um, like the major requirement. Um, yeah, thank you. Next slide. Um, yeah, and for your persistent volumes for, for PVCs, um, you can uh, use um, uh, basically any uh, backup tool, um, such as Minio. And uh, um, yeah, it still rely on the block storage for the uh, cluster, for Kubernetes cluster. And for innovation suite, um, you still have to use the uh, previous approach with uh, um, um, like the uh, RDBMS provided uh, before. Thanks. Next slide. Um, yeah, for your harbor, as mentioned previously, it should be uh, the dedicated VM. Um, and um, yeah, it should have the uh, these uh, uh, sizing requirements. So minimum like one node uh, for CPUs, uh, eight gig of RAM, and the storage size at least 750 gigabytes. Uh, next slide, please. Um, to sync your images to your local registry, uh, you uh, um, need to set up the uh, deployment engine in your ITSM. Uh, this again should be a dedicated VM. And it consists of uh, um, it, it, it should consist of the following components like the uh, Jenkins, Ansible, Git, Kubecli, Helm, etc. Uh, thanks. Next slide, please. So here, um, yeah. Next slide. Um, as we previously mentioned, uh, we highly suggest that uh, you copy your images from bmccontainers.com from DTR to your local registry uh, to address the performance uh, related and availability rel reliability aspects. So please um, uh, yeah, use this approach rather than uh, copy from the BMC DTR directly. Uh, next one. Um, as for the stage two installation process. Uh, yeah. Um, before starting the installation of uh, uh, common services of the platform components, ensure that you have the uh, certificates, security certificates, SSL configured. So as you may know, we have the uh, CI certificate, uh, which are supported. Uh, also, we have the uh, self-signed certificate uh, for HTTPS connectivity. So um, yeah, for normally for this uh, deployment, uh, it consumes most of uh, the time since uh, it requires all the validation and handshakes. So before you start the deployment, please ensure that you have the uh, SSLs in place. And um, yeah, next one. Yeah, just to, right. Um, it's probably you may know, um, we uh, try to um, optimize uh, with various tools the uh, deployment experience. So for this reason, we have uh, developed the health check tool, um, uh, which uh, like uh, facilitates you during the deployment phase. And uh, um, uh, basically it uh, checks uh, uh, your environment compares to the, the, the uh, like the desired um, uh, one and uh, uh, confirms if you have any discrepancies or inconsistencies. So it validates the uh, following areas for the uh, installation option, uh, like uh, such as uh, um, make, sh make sure that you, your cup cuttle um, is uh, um, 
is okay, all the settings under the uh, uh, persistent volume states correct, uh, as well as under the Helm OpenShift ingress versions. Um, it also validates uh, uh, right configuration for your certificates for uh, SSLs, validates the SMTP configuration. Um, the uh, ingress class uh, values under the infra config, um, the ITSM Jenkins uh, uh, pipeline settings, and also it has the uh, post is installation. So actually it um, has three stages, uh, the pre-installation, installation, and the post install. And um, during every uh, stage, you have uh, an option to run the check uh, online and uh, track the progress. Uh, validate if uh, um, the um, deployment is successful and uh, it will also provide you a report in HTML format um, as well um, as you can run the uh, post deployment health check. Um, so I highly recommend that you um, refer to the health check latest documentation space. So for this, we have uh, um, uh, like two spaces with the um, on prem installation. Uh, and as well for the Jenkins pipeline. Uh, thank you. Next slide. So as for the um, platform installation process, um, yeah, um, we uh, we have the uh, deployment management uh, manager SH script, uh, which uh, performs the installation after you run the health check tool. And basically once you execute it uh, with all predefined setup, um, so you should be, um, good to proceed uh, with the platform common services installation. Once the uh, common services been uh, deployed, uh, you should be, next one, please. Yeah, um, you should be, um, uh, you ac or expected to set up the uh, RSSO realms um, with uh, the uh, required tenants. Uh, once the SSO is uh, um, configured, um, yeah, you uh, start the um, Innovation Suite ITSM pipelines installation. Next slide, please. Yeah, one more. So here you can see the uh, dashboard, Jenkins dashboard, with the uh, pipelines. Um, uh, once you run them, uh, next one. You have this uh, configuration uh, values um, as the pipeline inputs. So once you define them and you run it, um, you have the, uh, yeah, one more. Um, you have capability to monitor the uh, installation process of Innovation Suite ITSM suite um, uh, through the uh, uh, console, like the, uh, um, the uh, Jenkins one, Jenkins console. And you also have the timelines uh, specified here. So with the um, uh, pipelines installation, um, you should be able to complete successfully. Again, we encourage you to uh, run the Hel Helix Health Check Tool utility uh, for the um, uh, post installation phase. And uh, also under the um, next one. Um, yeah, under the uh, um, final stage, yeah, you, you can see actually you have various options for the uh, license um, uh, as well as post install configurations. Uh, again, health check tool uh, is capable to validate the uh, post install settings and uh, yeah, please uh, consider using it. And uh, yeah, I believe with that, uh, back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitro. So, so we have kind of covered the stage one and stage two in the process, basically the, the prepared and planning uh, planning areas, uh, stages, and then Dimitri had did an excellent job and explained to you about the uh, preparing and installation deployment uh, uh, details, right? So now let's move on to stage three. So if you look at these stages, one thing you need to note is that there are like a few golden backups uh, uh, shown here. So those are like pretty essential. So these will come in handy in different stages for you to uh, track your changes and move on. And, and in, in some cases, you can go back to those backups to, to, to basically fix things and so forth. Uh, so stage three is all about your development activities. Uh, uh, at this time, we, we highly encourage that you, you enable freeze in your current production system, right? 
And, and for some reason, there's, for example, like between now and between the go live with the container uh, platform, uh, you, you're not a, you still uh, have to move, I mean, promote changes to your production, unavoidable changes, of course, right? So, so we, rec we recommend you to start documenting those changes because there will be one more opportunity in the migration uh, process uh, during the stage eight uh, where you'll be doing the pre final validation, right? So, data migration validation. So, that'll be a opportunity for you to do the uh, actually real freeze, enforce real freeze at that time. So, but still we encourage you to not do uh, crazy changes and, and uh, between now and, and uh, that stage, the reason is then you have to redo all your uh, UAG cycles and whatnot. So yeah, so any unavoidable changes, yeah, with, between this stage and, and the, and the uh, final stages, you can you can keep track of them and you can uh, re, re uh, import them. Uh, so for, for your migration of your customizations and overlay, so as I said, we have a new utility called Work for Migration Utility or Customization Migration Utility. You can download from EPD and and and, and use them. Uh, only only that caveat is it's you can only use them for a version of 20 or 2 if you have if you have a source of 20 or 2. If you have a, a version which is earlier than 20 or 2, um, you you you, ha you can you have to use the uh, developer studio deployment console, right? Uh, with uh, um, so this this slide talks about the workflow migration utility. So it has like 12, 12 steps, 12 stages, we want to call them. So uh, it, it runs all this in, in, uh, in an automated fashion. So it basically migrates your permissions, it uh, moves your CMDB data, it validates them, it migrates your AR base objects, and it also, um, uh, uh, sorry, it migrates both your custom custom and overlay objects in state, in state and step four. Um, in step five, it, uh, it, uh, step five and six is basically covers your overlays and regular forms and everything, right? So, so four, five, and six when you run it. Uh, it so between two and uh, state six, it basically does the main chunk of the work. It basically migrates all the customizations and overlays, and it also rebuilds any unions and all that good stuff. And it also does runs a asset CQI. So if you uh, if most of you would have been familiar that if you um, load any CIs and CMDB, you have to Run the uh, asset sync UI to sync to the asset uh, uh, asset side of the uh, setup side um, in the ITSM asset side because only when you say when you run the asset sync you will see the uh, CIs in the asset management console. Um, it, it also basically uh, might it also triggers in something called auto reconciliation. So auto reconciliation is a process which I'll cover in the next slide. So it, it basically uh, uh, there is a tool we have available which auto reconciles the objects which. BMC may changes on, right? So, and let's say you have an overlay, but you have a field which uh, you made a change on and BMC may change on that field, uh, the auto recon will take care of it. So you can run auto recon in two ways. Uh, one is through the utility, as I said, but for some, for, for, for based on your version, if you're not able to use that utility, you can still run the auto reconciliation utility manually, right? So you can, uh, uh, so prerequisite is you have to export and um, import your objects, right? Using either those tools like Developer Studio Deployment Console or something or that's a packaging list also available. So the link, uh, there'll be a link uh, which will be shared to you in, in the intern process where there'll be two two uh, links available to you. One is uh, best practice for migrating CMDB objects and best practice for migrating ER objects. And those links, you will have details of how, how you can use the package list uh, combinations as well. So that'll Kind of speed speed up your uh, migration of your customizations. So you run the auto recon manually. You have to run it manually. For we recommend you run manually for each of your uh, objects separately. So we, we encourage you to have your definition files for forms, filters, and and activeness and menus separately so that you can run it. So it'll be easy for you to debug if there's any issues, and you can successfully uh, uh, basically import them and also reconcile them. So once you perform the auto reconciliation activity, it generates a file. So it generates a file for each of these objects. So you have you'll have like one for each of your uh, uh, objects, like forms and filters. So once it generates the files, you basically copy those files to the Developer Studio Workspace area, and then you log into the Developer Studio Workspace area, and then you will see on the left hand side on the navigation pane there'll be something called a recon application uh, list, right? So like how you see application objects, you will see recon applications. Once you <clears throat> once you select a recon application, you double click it. It'll basically um, um, show all your objects to reconcile. So the, the auto reconciliation, what it does is it basically auto reconciles whatever it can auto reconcile. As I said, the changes we did on those overlays which uh, we own, so we, we a BMC will auto reconcile for you. But if there's changes which you did on those overlays, 
you have to uh, perform the three-way reconciliation. So this also helps you to come up with an objects list, which you should, which you can uh, use it for your manual reconciliation. So once you have this objects list, you can use the traditional way of <coughs> completing your three-way reconciliation activity, which is basically comparing your overlaid workflow with the base objects and basically performing your three-way reconciliation. So um, at this stage, uh, you, once you got I mean, my customization overlays and all the good stuff, so now there's opportunity here for if you want to uh, do any new development before you go live on, on the container environment. So you can look look into uh, any anything you want to customize on the any allowed customization, of course, <laughs> whatever we allow in customization on these areas, you can you can customize those with like branding and things like that. You can create new service catalogs and something that's that's what you need. Uh, you want to create some. Before you go live, same thing with you can create some reports, uh, dashboards, and stuff like that. So we we strongly encourage you plan these as well during the planning stages so that uh, you 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 basically have it covered. Uh, integration. So uh, we have a lot of VMC applications out there. So if you might already have some of those, so we we will still support all those. We still support all the VMC product integration in, um, integration with, with the Converge platform, the container world. Um, so like Discovery, Virtual Chat, BCCM, TrueSci, uh, we support all these integrations. And uh, for third-party applications, the supported integration methods are like REST APIs, which is the uh, most recommended option from uh, we, we would we would say. And then we still support web services, so SOAP web services. We we still support the RAPS and CMDP APIs integrations, right? Um, uh, one thing we would encourage you that if you uh, if your integrations don't fall under any of these supported methods, we strongly encourage you to. Uh, looking into for you to redesign it to to work with the container environment. So let's look at stage four. So now that you have uh, completed your, your in installation deployment, you're completed uh, bringing all your customizations, you've completed your integration configurations and any new development. Uh, now is the time for data migration. So, um, so, so data migration, as I said earlier, we have two utilities primarily to be used. Right, it's so one of the HTM utility, which is the Helix Data Manager. And then the DWP utility. So DWP utility covers the digital workplace uh, application. Uh, it has uh, like an export and import options. I'm going to cover that in the next slide. So we strongly encourage you to run these data migration all the all the all your environments, your new development, your pre-prod environments like like QAS ID pre-prod, and then your production environments. And of course, always download the latest version of these tools. So the uh, HTM um, uh, tool. So these five steps are very essential for you to uh, configure the tool, uh, prepare and configure the tool before you actually use it for migration. So uh, ensure that you have a, a stage server copy because the HTM tool works with the database and not through the AR, AR layer, right? So we encourage you to have a copy of your production database in a staging uh, uh, data, database server. So you use that for your export. Um, and then you basically register, you, uh, register the source and target servers to the HTM user. You, you basically create a HTM user on your database, and that's what we encourage you to use to register the source and registration uh, target systems. Once the uh, the systems are registered, then the HTM tool knows like where to go pick up the data and where to where to import. Uh, so there's a essential process, which is a you know, um, Number three, which is basically uh, there's a discovery option, which basically discovers all your metadata and and all the good stuff. It just discovers that it, you need to uh, it, you run you run it on the source and destination, and you get your file. So so that's the file which is going which the HTML is going to use for your mappings and so forth. So then um, the out of the box templates is what you're going to download next. So you so based on your version, if you are in 2002 and if your target is 22.106, so you will find those packages. You download them. So that's the uh, template you're going to use. And of course, then uh, once you, uh, since you have your discovery file and all that, so step number five is basically ensuring that you you configure that file system here and you're ready for the migration. Um, so now it's time to run your migration, data migration tool. So, so HTM tool uh, um, supports ITSM, of course, uh, digital, uh, digital workplace catalog, uh, smart reporting, as applicable, and smart IT, right? So these are the four, uh, applications, products, uh, HTM supports, right? And uh, we strongly, so at, at the at the stage 
uh, where in the stage three where you're doing your uh, development activities and all that. So that's that's where you'll be taking your golden backup one, right? So now you have your golden backup one without data. So now you complete your data migration for all this all these products, and we encourage you to take the golden backup two here. And in fact, we want you to take the golden backup two as because when you run HTM uh, utility, you cannot run the utility for all these products together. So you got to run it one at a time, right? So when you run the HTM for ITSM, after that we encourage you to take a golden backup too, so that you have a you have a good starting point. And then let's say you run the uh, digital workplace catalog migration, you run into some issues, you have to go back to a backup. Then that's where you can go to go back to a backup, right? So we strongly encourage you to take these backups um, uh, after each migration, so that uh, at the end you'll have a backup with all the data migrated for you, right? Um, and as I said, the digital workplace. Uh, um, application has separate utility called uh, uh, export import utility, and these are the comp these are the uh, um, what do you call uh, data it's going to it's going to migrate to so the component uh, data, your location data, your your catalog data, your attachments and stuff and so on and so forth. So uh, the way to use this again uh, as is uh, this this utility only supports twenty one two and onwards as well. Um, so the way this utility works is uh, something similar to the HTM, but like for example, you have to set up your database connections. And uh, one one thing we strongly encourage, encourage here is uh, the, the digital workplace uh, application has some, has some uh, uh, what do you call, process data forms like uh, ACS forms and so on and so forth, where it tends to build up some some data over the, over the period of time. So since you're in a migration phase, we strongly encourage you to go clean up those process data so that you don't unnecessarily bring those data because those forms do have uh, data which is for current processing data as well. So Ensure that you clean, clean up the old processing data. There are specific scripts available for them. You can download and or you can reach out to your BMC counterpart and get them. So we strongly encourage you to do that before you basically start the export and import process, right? So once you cleaned up your uh, process, the old process data, export the data. From, again, we need we also encourage you to export the data from stage DB and not from the actual DB, right? Uh, and then you do you basically import the data out of the new development. So so once you've completed your data migration, uh, as I told you earlier, that's a license utility, uh, compliance utility, conventional utility available. Uh, so at, this is the time you will run it uh, because now since you ran your data migration, all your people profile data will have the classic licenses, even though you have purchased bundle licenses. So now this utility, what it'll do is it'll convert your classic to bundle and it'll tag it to the correct licenses. So this is an essential step you need to do uh, before you start using the environment because otherwise you, your people profiles will still be uh, pointing to the classic licenses. Okay, so now we have, we have done our, we have done our uh, installation, we have done our uh, development activities, uh, we've done our uh, data migration, now it's time to do yeah, the project team. I'm gonna call the project team as a, a team which tests before you hand it over to the end users, right? So the project team is gonna do the unit testing, uh, um, making sure you cover all your test cases, right? So performing unit testing and fixes. So one thing is, while you're doing your, uh, your development activities and all that, uh, we really strong, again, it's in the documentation very clear on the process. We strongly encourage you to have your system in admin only mode because you're actually doing admin work, right? So development work and all that. So we, because we don't want unnecessary processes like escalations and other things like tr triggering and, and manipulating any data in the environment. So we strongly encourage you to have your System set in uh, um, admin only mode and quiet mode, and then now when you're in, in the when you're completed, you're in, and of course when you're doing your data migration, uh, as I told you earlier, uh, the HTM tool works at database level, which, which means all your services are down, right? So so you'll be in uh, admin only mode doing your development work. The HTM will be doing data data migration at the database level. So this will be the opportunity where you bring everything up and running, all your services and everything up and running in full mode in your development server. And then you will perform your, your testing cycles. So fix any any. We want encourage you to fix all your all your issues with uh, 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 and package them in, in the deployment with the, through the deployment console as deployment packages. So that way, um, this is the this is the way you'll be using to promote changes uh, fixes from dev to QA, dev to PR uh, during your UAT cycle. So we strongly encourage you to uh, practice that even during your unit testing, so that anything you fix, you you have those packages. And one more thing, just a reminder: like you may you may be fixing issues which you found out, which your team is uh, is is responsible for. But don't don't forget to also include those changes in those packages. Like hey, let's say there's a, a few 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 objects the uh, a BMC fix for you, so make sure that you get capture those as well and add it to those packages. 
So this time, uh, since you completed your, your unit testing and you also have your packages, we want you to go back to the Golden Backup 2, which will go back to a state where there's no test data, right? So now you already have your fixes. You're going to reapply the fixes which you took in step three, right? And then you again take a Golden Backup 2 and overwrite it. So this will give you kind of giving you an idea that, hey, you start you you start after your data migration with a with clean state, you, you do your testing, you, you revert back to a, a, a stage where there's no test data, but you already have your fixes in your in the deployment packages and apply, and you're good to go. So when you have your uh, goal build to ready now, you you your development environment will have will be in a state with all your data till date and everything working, right? And one more point, like uh, for before you start your UAT, if there's any any key uh, use cases which your end users are looking for to work once once they start the UAT, please don't forget that to also test them during the unit testing cycle, right? Just a, just a humble reminder there. So now we um, we are in the uh, emulated cutover stage. So you completed your testing, you're good to go. So before you uh, uh, um, hand it over for your UAT cycles with all the uh, extended team, we want you to practice the Delta migration utility. So what are the benefits of practicing Delta migration at this at this stage? So there's two benefits to it. One benefit is you uh, you have the opportunity to discover the, discover the types of issue with Delta data, right? So so that's very key. So that you don't want to uh, practice is so late, and then and then have I mean have difficulty and are are getting into getting into longer cycles. The the second benefit it, it helps you to determine the time you need for all these activities, right? So the end to end activities for the immediate cutover, uh, delta migration, uh, pre and post all these activities. So make sure you have the end to end steps documented with timing so that uh, let's say it comes to like sixteen hours or twenty hours, and you want to and cut it down so you have an opportunity later and you will cut over two where you can go in and shoot for those uh, timings. So what does what does Emulet cut over do? So you basically uh, again ensure you get the latest uh, uh, database copy from your from your production, put it on staging DB, stop all your services, run a HTM job. Now you're running the job in an incremental run. So there's an option for that. So you run it and of course you'll resolve any data migration uh, uh, issues. And, uh, and and basically uh, repeat this for digital workplace catalog. So ITSM and digital workplace catalog is only the two applications you would like you would have to run data delta migration because the digital workplace smart IT smart reporting applications they have they have minimal data volume and and uh, that's so we don't even have uh, support for full migration there. So you, you we you can always run a full migration later in the cycle to, to bring it up to your your current data. So again, let's again license conversion because you brought some Delta data. So that could be some people profile data with the uh, classic licenses. So again, run the utility in conversion mode and it'll convert your uh, uh, people profile to bundle licenses. So we are in the UAD state now. So now that, uh, yeah, so preparing for the UAD. So, so here we strongly encourage you to uh, uh, parallelize your, your, your testing cycle. So as, you, as, as I stored, showed you earlier in the stages where uh, you will have packages ready, right, with all your fixes, right, and uh, you will have completed your uh, uh, installation, deployment, everything on on pre-prod and production environments, QA, uh, SIT, and all those environments. So now we're ready to go. So what what should you do as a first step? So you have those environments ready. Still now you've been till stage six, you've been all your activities only on dev, right? Say so stage seven is where you will jump into your UAT, uh, QA, and and SIT and and pre-prod boxes and prod environments. So where you've already completed your installation. So now you use those packages, right? So deploy all those packages. So that'll that'll take you to where you are right now and then perform the um, data migrations, right? So once you perform your data migrations, which is, where, which is what we discovered, now you're ready for your UAT. So you perform your UAT on your QA and pre-prod environments and also in your production environment. So what we encourage you to concentrate on your QAs, all your functional testings, Define and execute all your plan uh, in user cycles there. In parallel, you can also do the uh, uh, expanded functional testing in prod. And but but we also wanted to concentrate on integration testings and any load performance response times testings all in production because that's where we want you to concentrate on the, all those kind of testing and looking for performance issues, latencies, any spike issues, or whatever you want to uh, you want to cover test cycles. Please, uh, we want you to we encourage you to do it directly in your production. Uh, the main goal before you go to the next stage is make sure there's no blocker issues, right? So that's way that's when because after the next stage you'll be in a in a, in a freeze mode and you from stage eight to stage ten it'll be quick, so you'll be going live in a few weeks, right? Um, 
So this is this slide is just telling you that hey, make sure you complete all your your UAD cycles. Um, use the deployment console to export the fixes and, and create packages. When, whatever you find, and then import packages in QN prod. Um, that's basically what it what it says, right? So you you, you keep doing your testing in QN prod, but do you do you do you fix your issues in your development? Use the deployment packages and keep importing them, so you don't. So you don't, uh, what do you call, uh, your, your, stats, your testing cycle continues, you're not impacted so that your packages come in and you continue and complete your testing cycles. Of course, add multiple cycles as you need to complete it because the, the goal is to get a sign off before you get you exit stage seven, right? Uh, okay, stage eight. So so right now you're kind of closer to the goal line. Um, so this is where, as I told you earlier, you, you have to, uh, um, um, Make sure that all your all the packages for all the customizations are there. So till now, right? And all your uh, this you have a good package of packages for all your fixes from all your functional uh, testings and all that UAD cycles. And this is very important. So you might have encountered different configuration issues and environment issues in your dev and your QA, your pre prod SIT. Ensure that all this covered, everything's working everywhere. Most importantly, all your uh, configuration and environment issues are fixed in prod, right? Before you move to the next. Phase. So um, this is where you basically hot freeze. So from this stage onwards, uh, on your current production, you are not making any more changes, right? So so what you do here, so so you if you remember on stage three, we said you're starting your development activities, but you try to freeze your your current production as much as possible. Any new development, if not, track those changes. So this is the uh, a stage where you will bring those cha delta changes and promote it to the new uh, uh, production environment. So you can directly put in a production environment if you want, that's what we, we encourage. Or if you want to put in the lower environment and test it first, you can always do it in your, in your, in your dev as well, new dev as well. So what does the pre-final data migration validation look like, right? So you go back all the way to your backup one. The reason we have to go back to your backup one is because uh, because you're bringing in Delta changes, the the you have to go and uh, redo the discovery and everything in the HTM pack because the HTM when you did the discovery, is it doesn't know about the new changes you brought in. So that's the reason. So you go back all the way to backup one. The backup one is the backup you, you, you took after your installation, right? And that's why it's very essential that you have all your packages ready. So you'll, you'll get back to your stage very quickly. So go back to your backup one. Apply all the fixes. Now you're, you're back to back to where you are right now as of today because you have all the fixes and everything is important in production, right? So now you bring in your delta changes and you you may have to even do a perf, um, perform a three-way reconstruction as well because you, based on the changes you brought in, if you brought in some few workflow changes, it may not be that bad. But if you brought in some field changes, form changes, you may have to run three-way reconstruction and make sure that everything is everything is good. And then we want you to uh, take uh, take a backup three. The reason we call this backup three is because you already have a backup two, which which has all the data. So we don't want to overwrite that, right? So that's why we want encourage you to call this a backup three. So now you'll have a new backup called backup three without any data, right? So now you will perform your full migration because now you have all your fixes, everything there. So everything is good. You bring in all your data now with the two utilities, HTML and the DWP utility. Uh, then of course you're going to replace the backup tree. So now we have a good starting point in the production that hey you have everything working right. So now you perform some final testing and make sure everything works. And this will be your final testing uh, and ensure that you fix all those issues and you're ready to go right. Um, on the emulated cutover, so this is basically what we encourage you to do just eight to ten days before go live because we want you to reduce the data coming in on go live. So you can you can. Uh, what do you call it? reduce the duration of your data migration activity on the go line. So this is we strongly recommend you to do the final delta migration activities eight to ten days before go line. So what are you doing again? Ensure the issues and un un uncovered during your uh, final testing are fixed. So the, the final testing you didn't have in any prod, make sure it's all fixed. Now you can perform a delta a delta migration directly to your prod from your uh, staged um, database, right? And ensure that um, again, again the benefits. I'm talking about the benefits, right? So you basically, you get get a once you once you get the data migrated, you'll have a quicker uh, final migration, right? We also strongly recommend uh, this is the immediate cut over. You'll be uh, these are the step exact step you'll be practicing on the go live. So make sure you time time all those activities here, right? So that's why we recommend that. And what does this do? Okay, again, it, uh, it exports and imports all your data to, of course, using the, both the utilities, HTML and the DWP utility. Right? 
And there's something called post migration which, which you will also see even you know, when you're running on the when you're running the, the migrations even earlier. So they're always like pre and and data migration and post. So you run those post migration scripts. The one good advantage on the post migration script on the on the email cutover is the scripts are very minimal. So you'll be running scripts like next ID fixes, server reference fixes, and something like that. There's no there's no crazy scripts there on, at, on the on the embedded cutover to, to kind of a scenario. Uh, of course, once you complete it, you take a golden backup tree. Again, you're over it in the same backup tree. Um, and this is, a, this is important, right? So see, before this stage, you've already completed your final testing, right? So now you're closer to your go live. So at this time, once you've completed this migration, we want you to set your production admin admin only more. So you're kind of ready for your go live, right? And only do the testing on the go lives. So any testing you gotta do, do it on stage eight. Right? And again, time each activity. So now it's time for your go live. So ensure, again, normal things you guys always do on your go live, right? So send out kind of communications and cut over details, shut down your current production, perform the final data migration with all the post migration scripts and all the good stuff, perform your smoke tests, and uh, Ensure you identify and fix any blocker issues. Hopefully, there's no blocker issues. The blocker issues, we, that's why we give you a lot of opportunities in EC1, EC2, your pre final data migration. So, we try in the, with the process, we try to reduce all that so that hopefully there's no go live blockers. Um, again, you make your go no go decision and you're going live. Um, with that, I uh, yeah, I let, before I, I mean, uh, before I say bye, <laughs> I want to, I want to just def definitely cover all the uh, resources for sure. So we have the recommended skill set with all the good stuff Dimitro is uh, talking about for the container world. So what 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 interest, uh, orchestration uh, platforms and and the tools uh, we support and uh, and we strongly recommend uh, based on what what the platform and what products you are going to deploy. Ensure you get familiar familiarized with those and you have all the skill sets before you go actually do your deployment. We strongly encourage those. Um, as far as uh, some good resource links, we have some links here for you for you for the all the tools we we covered in this, in this uh, um, uh, webinar. And there's some very good trainings here. Please take advantage of these trainings. So that first training is, is basically the entire um, uh, recall uh, ITSM container deployment training. So it's WBT you can watch, which you can learn all the all the uh, we call the the shell script. Um, uh, uh, platform deployment steps and the Jenkins pipe and all that is shared there. The second and the second one is all about HTM web-based training. It's like a three-hour training or five hours training, if I'm not wrong, which you can go through. And I strongly encourage the ILT instructor-led training for the HTM. If people are not taking that, it's a two-day tra two training, but has hands-on lab and you can even have your source server, destination target server, everything there. So you can have your good hands-on exercise before you jump into a project if you're not already taking it, we encourage it. And of course, there's a, a HTM tool videos up there, which you, which you can also leverage. Um, and we have some planning documentation references too. So we, we talked about the architecture, I think we, we told it a few times today. And then of course, we talked about how we can use our, our checklist and questionnaires and preparation uh, details for you to prepare your deployment plan, uh, uh, migration plan, implementation plan before you actually go to your deployments. And of course, reach out to BMC as needed. Uh, uh, during proactively, and we can help, definitely help you. Uh, with that, um, I think I'm, I'm good and done. Over back to you, Samantha. Thank you, Dimitri.